Every once in a while, you might find yourself in a situation where there's something on your system taking up a lot of resources. Maybe it's using all your RAM or all of your CPU resources, or maybe your GPU's running extraordinarily hot. Whatever the situation, you have something going on that you need to suss out. And the best way to do that, or at least the best place to start, is to take a look at a system resource monitor. Now, these things are a dime a dozen. There are dozens of these things out there, and they're all varying levels of good. What I want to do today is talk about the top five system resource monitors that you should definitely check out. Some of them you probably have. Maybe there are a couple new ones out there for you, and that'd be good too. So that's what we're going to do today is talk about the top five system resource monitors that are out there. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So the first one on the list is really two. And this is a kind of, a, it's a two for, it's a, it's a two for one special. And the reason why I've grouped these things together is because they're very similar, but they are different enough that they both deserve to be on the list. But you know, you, you'll get the idea. So the first one is top and this one kind of has to top the list. <laughs> That's horrible. I'm fired. <laughs> That's absolutely the ridic most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Anyways, it has to be the best. It has to be mentioned somewhere on the list because it is installed on basically every Linux system that you're going to find out there. Probably BSD2, I don't know that for sure, but for sure on Linux, if you've installed Linux, you have top installed. I've never tried a single distro out there that doesn't have top. And in the B-roll that you're seeing now, you'll see that top is very basic. It doesn't have color syntax highlighting, none of that stuff. It does have some interactability in that it will change, like it automatically updates. It's not like static, but in terms of like mouse support or moving things around with your keyboard, there's none of that stuff. It's very, very simple. All you'll look and see here is all of the process information that you'll need. You'll be able to see what's causing the issues or what's taking up all the resources and how your CPU is doing, how much memory you're using, things like that. It's very, very simple. It's by far the most basic of system resource monitors that are out there, but it's oftentimes the best one simply because it's automatically available. It means that if you are installing something like Gen 2 or you've installed a distribution that for whatever reason you can't connect to the internet on or you're having some resource problems where you can't download something, whatever the situation may be, you have top available to you. You don't have to worry about not being able to download something. It's automatically there. Now, the one that I'm grouping with this is HTOP. Now, HTOP has also been around for a very long time and it's very similar to top, but it does a lot more. It has a lot more customization. It has color. It allows you to actually interact with the information that you're seeing in the terminal. You can kill processes and move up and down the processes list. You can see your CPU information in graph form. You can see your network and memory and all that kind of stuff information in a more sortable list than you can with top. So it's much more customizable and easier to read than top is but it's also not installed by default. So I'm kind of grouped these things together because top is installed by default, but HTOP is kind of like it's improved younger sibling. It's much more readable in my opinion. I usually just install HTOP, but top is also usually available. So those are the first two. The second one is an application called BTOP. Now BTOP is the result of an evolution of many different programs that were created by, I think the same developers. They we're learning many different programming languages and they re kept rewriting the same system monitor in many different programming languages. So, there, so there's one like BPyTop, there was one that was written in C, there was one written in C++. You get the idea. BTOP, I believe, is the final incarnation of this. I'm not actually sure about that, but it's the one that I've been using for quite a while now. It's also the prettiest terminal system monitor that you're going to find out there. It has graphs for your hard disks for your networking for your cpu and they're very pretty in terms of actually looking at them but they're also very useful because you can kind of see which cores are having you know problems on your cpu if you're having something that's taking up a whole bunch of cores or whatever you can see the read write activity on your hard drives and also check out this the free and available space on your hard drives that are connected all that stuff in a very visual format inside of the terminal but you can also do the same thing which that you could do with 
top and H top in that you can see a list of processes that are running on your system sorted by various informations like how much how much CPU they're taking, how much memory they're taking, so on and so forth. So you can do all of that stuff and it's even more customizable than HTOP in there. You can change the color scheme, you can change what's actually outputted onto the screen, the order that it's put into, and so much more. There's a ton of different settings that you can change right from within the application so you don't have to go messing around with a configuration file which you kind of do in some cases in HTOP, although HTOP does have some settings within the application itself, but it's much more so in BTOP. So you can make all those changes right here within the application. So BTOP is my favorite terminal system resource monitor. It's the one that I use more than any other. So that's BTOP. The next one is a little bit different in that it's not necessarily for your CPU or your memory. HTOP, TOP, and BTOP all are more multi-purpose in their information gathering and display. They give you information on all of your system. And VTOP is a application that is meant to give you information about your GPU and your GPU only. Now it does have some CPU stuff kind of wiggled in there, but it's not the purpose of it. This thing is supposed to give you as much information as possible about the usage of your GPU. Now, the name of it suggests that it's for NVIDIA only, and that's the way that it started out, but it does in fact work with AMD. As you'll see in the B-roll, I have an AMD card, and it's working just fine for me. Now, I don't know if there's differences, whether or not you get more features if you're using N NVIDIA. I don't have an NVIDIA card, so I don't know if that's the case, but I assume that they're basically the same, and it does work with both. I don't know if it works with Intel or not, but perhaps it does, and basically this here gives you all of the information you'll ever need to know about the usage of your GPU, how hot it's running, the, the fan speed, what's using your GPU at the current moment, how much video RAM it's using, how much video RAM you have available, all of that stuff right in a terminal user interface that you can, just like HTOP, interact with. So if you have an application that's using a ton of video RAM, you can kill it right from this application. You can also pay attention to what's using your GPU and kind of know if there's something that's out of whack there. So that's NVTOP. It's not something that you'll need to use all the time, but if you find yourself having some video problems, maybe this will be a good place to start. The next one on the list is called Mission Center. Now, first off, I've made a whole video about Mission Center before, and in that video I called it Mission Control for the whole video. So don't be surprised if I call this thing Mission Control. It really should be called Mission Control, but it's called Mission Center. That's beside the point. Anyways, Mission Center is our first GUI-based system monitor that I'm going to be talking about today, and it is fairly full-featured. It has a reasonable interface. I wouldn't say it's the best. I actually think the one that we'll talk about next is much better, but it does give you graphs for all of the statistics that you could possibly want. Things like your network and your CPU and your memory and your graphics card even. It has a lot of the same information about your graphics card as in VTOP too, so if you want to kind of put that all in one, uh, Mission Center will do that for you as well. It'll also give you a list of your applications and processes that are running, and you can manage those just like you can with all the rest of them that are on this list. If you prefer a GUI, Mission Center is definitely one you should check out. I don't think it's as well designed as, like I said, the next one that we're going to be talking about, but it does a good job of giving you the information that you'll need. And it does give you more information than the terminal system monitors that we've talked about. It has more information, but even more so, I think that in terms of readability, the GUI ones that are on this list, Mission Center and the next one, do offer a little bit more in terms of readability than the ones that are in the terminal. But if you are more interested in the ones in the terminal than those that exist as well. Some people just prefer the GUI. So Mission Center is a very good system monitor. It has a lot of settings as well. You can go around and mess around with the settings. You can obviously manage all of your applications from in there in, ter in terms of which ones are running and stuff like that, just like you can with the terminal-based ones. But this one's all in GUI form. The next one on the list is also GUI. It's called Resources. And I like this one better than Mission Center. First off, I don't have to mess around with the name, but second of all, I think that this one's better designed. That's the reason why I put it in this place in the list, even though I'm not really ranking these things. 
I like the design of it better. It does have about the same amount of information as Mission Center does, but the UI of it, I believe, or at least in my opinion, is better laid out. The graphs are better looking, and you can just kind of interact with the interface a little bit easier, and it's more intuitive in my opinion. So, just like with Mission Center and all of the terminal-based ones, you can get all of your information here, including your GPU, your CPU, your memory, stuff like that. All the basic stuff that all of these things have in common. This one just happens to be a little bit prettier than the other one that I talked about. So that's resources. This is one that I have had on my system for a little while, and I found it on FlatHub, which is where I found Mission Center as well. So if you want to download these, they're both available via FlatHub. But the vast majority of the terminal ones that you're going to find in your distro's repositories, so you shouldn't have any problems finding any of these. Alright, so that's actually the list that I had in mind. I was going to stop there because that's five. I think that's five. Yeah, that's five. I actually had to count. <laughs> Counting to five is hard. Uh, but anyways, I technically it's six because I, I combined the first two, but what? so who knows? I didn't actually know how to count. Anyways, but I do have two that are honorable mentions and the reason why i'm going to throw these in as honorable mentions is because chances are if you're using gnome or kde you have one of these installed already because they usually come with those two desktop environments and that those are the default system monitors for gnome and kde now in the b-roll you'll see the one for kde i don't have b-roll of the one for gnome i apologize for that both gnome and kde have default system monitors that usually come installed with your distro so you can just go search those out in your applications menu start those up and they have all the basic information that these other ones that i've shared with also have now i can't speak for the gnome one because i've never actually used it i know it exists but on the kde one at least i found that it didn't have nearly as much in terms of actual information as something like resources or mission center actually do that doesn't mean that it's not useful it just doesn't have as much in terms of you know the breadth of information that those other two offer so the benefits for the kde and the gnome ones at least in my opinion are that they're already installed so you don't have to worry about going and hunting for different something different but I don't think that they're the best, but they do deserve an honorable mention. So those are the best system monitors on Linux, at least in my opinion. I personally use BTOP the most. I have resources installed when I do need something that's more graphical in, in, in scope. So those are the ones that I use personally, but all of these are really, really good. Top does make an appearance in my usage every once in a while just because I need to find out, you know, really fast what's going on and it's always there no matter what so if you have a system monitor that you prefer leave those in the comment section below if you have other comments you can leave those down there as well you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash the linux cast you can also support me on Kofi and YouTube as well. Those links will also be in the video description. You can also head on over to the store where you'll find all sorts of awesome merch, including desk mats and hats and hoodies and t-shirts and stickers and all sorts of stuff. That's available at shop.thelinkscast.org. All the proceeds for that go directly towards helping the channel and helping me make more links content for you guys. So thank you if you've already done that. I really do appreciate it. That's shop.thelinkscast.org. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you. The channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Also, I'm behind on do doing the supporter thing on the end screen credits again. I'll get caught up on that in the next couple days. I'm horrendous at do actually doing that. So I apologize for that. I'll, I'll get there. I promise. Anyways, thanks for every for everybody for your support. Thanks every everybody everybody for watching. Everybody is always a word that I mess up. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.